Hey everyone, I'm doing an LSA swap on my 71 Nova and I wanted to uh, go over all of the basics of installing this bad boy. Let's go and take a look, yeah? This is an LSA supercharger found on the Cadillac CTSVs and Camaro ZL1s from about 2010 to 2015. This is an Eaton 1.9 liter twin screw supercharger and it is the best bang for your buck if you have an LS engine. I'm gonna show you why. All right, so I pulled the lid off. Uh, what I got is, I actually picked up a ZL1 lid. That is part number 1262236. A lot of people recommend going with this lid over the CTSV. It apparently offers better heat soak, a little bit stiffer, uh, it's just a better piece. Now, I didn't really have much of an option. I couldn't find the CTSV lid at all on eBay or other places. Um, so I was able to pick this up for a decent price. At the time of this video, you're looking at uh, probably about 600 to 650 bucks for one of these things. Now, in addition to that, we have this gasket or seal, which goes between the brick for the heat exchanger and the supercharger itself. You see the twin scrolls in there. Beautiful, beautiful thing. So. This lid, I'm going to go ahead and, and reinstall this lid. Uh, this has 17 bolts. You go two passes for these bolts. First is 44 inch pounds. Second is 89 inch pounds. So let's go ahead and get that going. All right, second round, 89 inch pounds. Let's do it. Simple as that. All right, so there are a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to do to the snout before you get this thing installed. First up, there are a couple of open ports here and here. You'll want to uh, plug those up. I picked these plugs up from LSX Innovations, 20 bucks. These two vacuum ports, you can hook up to your power brake booster if you've got it, PCV as well. Now, the big thing that people talk about whenever they talk about the LSA supercharger is the spring coupler. This goes right in here. It connects the jack shaft to the uh, twin scrolls of the supercharger. From the factory, you see that it's got a spring. What this did was the spring would often fail. And you get rattling, etc. So a lot of these superchargers that you find are going to be pull-offs because of this issue. Now, Eaton sells uh, a solid isolator. It's like 65 bucks. You can find it just about anywhere. I picked mine up from LSX Innovations for something like half that, maybe 30 bucks, whatever. Uh, but highly recommend doing that. Now, the blow-off valve from the factory comes with this actuator, this electronic uh, valve or solenoid, rather. This, you can just pitch, as well as these two lines. Now, when you hook up this actuator, you're going to hook up this line V from the right hand side, which is where it's connected. You're going to hook it right up to there to the supercharger. There are two ports here that you can use for vacuum. I believe I'm going to plug both of them. I might actually use this one for my uh, PCV rather than that top one, simply because that's where my PCV is right now on my throttle body. In addition to that, you might want to replace the jack shaft bearings. I did. My bearings didn't sound so well. It was kind of crunching, whatever. Um, now, my supercharger came with this Lingenfelter hub, and I picked up a overdrive, an overdrive pulley from Weapon X Motorsports. It's a Grip Tech pulley. You can find these through just about any manufacturer. But the nice thing about this is, rather than being press on and off, it's 10 volts. So I can pop this off if I ever wanted to. I could go a little bit smaller. 
It did require a little bit of quote unquote machine work on my snout, but I did that with a grind wheel. So not a huge deal. Took me an hour or two of work, if that. It's also a good idea to pop the drain plug on the back of the supercharger. This uses a quarter inch Allen head and you can replace the supercharger oil. Now, GM says that this supercharger oil is good for the life of the supercharger. It's sealed in there. You don't ever have to change it. I got mine on a takeoff, so I figured, what the hell, might as well change it out. It's not expensive. I was able to pick this AC Delco supercharger oil up for about 10 bucks um, per four ounce bottle. The LSA needs two bottles. It's just under eight ounces to fill this up. My oil actually looked really good, so I didn't need to do it, but a little bit of peace of mind, cheap insurance. I recommend taking a syringe, sticking a piece of clear tubing in there. If you have the supercharger off, you can just lift it up and you can dump it out and then use the syringe to put the new oil in. Pretty straightforward. So if you're like me, you don't have LSA heads. The LSA supercharger actually came with a dowel pin right in there. I had to, uh, I tried to drill it out. This is actually pretty brittle and it broke. You can see then I tried to kind of clean it up a little bit. I need to clean up this gasket surface. Not really a gasket surface, but I still want to clean that up before I install this. Nice thing is these gaskets, check these if you get them with your supercharger. I was lucky enough to get them. Um, the gaskets are about 45 bucks if you need them. They are installed with a couple of rivets. You can drill or pop the rivets out. This one actually popped out when I was trying to uh, take care of this dowel pin. And finally, there are a couple of sensors on the LSA. Three, in fact. First off, you've got a three bar map right here. This is manifold absolute pressure sensor. That's going to uh, tell the ECU what boost you're making. Second off, IAT2 sensor. So the LSA has two of these sensors. I'm going to be using this one. A lot of people actually just run the IAT in the or near the MAF, their, their uh, mass airflow sensor. I'm actually going to use this one because it's going to give me a more accurate reading of my IATs at the supercharger after boost as opposed to upstream of that. And then finally, there's this uh, pressure sensor. This is actually open to the atmosphere. Now, I bought this. LSX Innovations plug for 10 bucks before I realized that. You can see on the bottom side, this hole right there. Where is it? Right there. That actually is a hole that goes straight through. So this, this sensor just reads um, the uh, atmospheric pressure, nothing else. So you don't need this. You can go ahead and pitch it. Just like that. So that's it. This supercharger is ready to install on my car. Now, I'm gonna get into my heat exchange system, fueling, all that stuff in future videos, probably starting with my heat exchange system. Give you a hint, uh, it involves some ZL1 componentry. But uh, shoot me a like, give me a comment, something like that, questions if you got any, and um, I'll see you guys later, all right?